What's up everyone? Be the installer here with Jen, my wife, hey. to help out. And we have the X90K for you from Sony. We're going to unbox and set up this X90K and then we're actually going to give you the full review all in one video here. So stick around, it's gonna be good. So if you like what you see today, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, and then hit the notification bell so you can be notified every time we have a new upload. So my question for you today is, we're about halfway through the year, what's your favorite TV of 2022? Is it Sony? Is it another brand? Do you love the QLEDs, the OLEDs, just the plain old LEDs? What's your favorite? Let us know in the comments. All right, should we get into it? Let's do it. Okay. I can actually see this one. Yeah. <laughs> not cutting blind. It's not six feet tall? Yeah, right. All right. Crack it open and see what we've got. Okay. So we've got our setup guide and remote and our batteries and all that good stuff's in here. Let's make sure we've got everything we need here. Oh yeah, that's a nice little package. Actually, the remote is not in here. I'm excited to see what this remote looks like. It looks like the remote is down there. Ooh. Is it a fancy Look guy? Look at that. That's New nice. remote. We'll have to check it out in a minute, but it's smaller. It's not yeah. the metal one, I don't think. Is it? Maybe it is. I don't think it's metal. No. I think it's just plastic. It's solid though. It's, it's a much better design. Yeah, looks good. It's very nice. Looks like we've got part of the legs. You sound very, not very confident. <laughs> part of the legs? I think. I'm Ron Burgundy. It's the legs. <laughs> there we go. The legs look pretty low profile, which I like, and they've already got the screws right here, so we'll just pop them in place and, and tighten them up. It looks pretty nice. I like it. That's all that's in there, so let's go ahead and get this box off. You want to take the uh, clips off? Yes. One more on that side. Oh. All right. There we go. I was looking on the side. Ready? One, two, three. So it looks pretty pretty secure. I like this on the front here. Oh yeah. It's got cardboard all over the front screen. Okay, you want to lift this out of the packaging here? Sure. Let's go ahead. Can you get a grip on it? Maybe like right here or something? I don't know. Down there? All the way down. One, two, yeah. three. Oh, it's so light. Here, I'll set it right here. We're just gonna lay it down to put the feet on. Let's go ahead and lay that down. So we have the feet here. There's two feet, one for each side, of course. That one has a, a what is it, a one on it, left? Mm -hmm. And the other one, is it R and two? No, it just says L and two. So we can just feed those, fire those right in there. So let's go ahead and lift it out, lift it up for her. Jen, you're amazing at this stuff, you know that? I've done it a time or two. You're the boss. All right, you wanna flip this around? A little spinneroo. A little spinnerooski. All right, Jen, let's get the, the entertainment stand back here, raise it up, and then we'll uh, see how cool this TV looks. Yeah? Sounds good. All right. Yeah. You want to come this way? Here. Got a little more room this way. You ready to lift this sucker? Let's do it. All right. Right, one, two, three. So light. <laughs> Probably could do this by yourself. Most definitely. All right, you want to take off some of the, the cardboard and the plastic and all that? Yes, all right. I do. There we go. I don't know about you, but now this is my favorite part. So, Brent, what is uh, what is this? Is this a LED, a QLED, a Mini? What's what's going on here? This is just your typical LED. It's one of the better LED TVs. So. Full array local dimming. So it's a fold LED. <laughs> a fold LED. A fold LED, yeah. So it has dimming zones, but it's not a QLED technically, and it's not an OLED, and it's not a mini LED. The, the step up from this, the X95K, is a mini LED. Whew. That looks like it's fun. But you know, if I tried to do it, it would just <laughs> break in half. Takes a highly qualified individual. Go long one. So I gotta keep the nails nice. 
There we go. Okay, so now that we got all the tape off, Bran, can you show me some of the features we've got going on? Absolutely. Awesome. Go to the back. Oh, you can see right there, it's got a speaker on the side. Oh. That's kind of cool how they have some of the sound going out the side, down, some in the back here. So on this side, we have four HDMI ports, one, two, three, four. Two of them you can game 4K 120, and this one here, number three, is the ARC or eARC one where we connect it to the sound bar or speaker system. You got some USBs, optical, the S Center in speaker, so we can put our uh, the HDA9 can connect there, and then the TV acts as a center channel. I'm interested to see how well this TV does with that because the OLEDs are pretty good. And then you have your landline and your you know cable uh, connection there and all that. So uh, pretty straightforward. Looks like you have a 300 by 300 millimeter Visa pattern on the back there, and then you have you know your power plug right there. So why don't we power this LED TV up? This LED. I'm gonna start bringing you on some jobs where you can just do all the work for me. All right. Okay, let's see. Let's go it. get the remote and fire it up. So, what do you think of that remote, Jen? It's nice. It's not too big. I wonder if it's backlit. No, nope, not backlit. And they took the numbers off. So, I think overall it's pretty straightforward because we didn't use the numbers. So, we just basically used the up, down, left, right, and the volume up and down. And then at the bottom there, we just used the YouTube, Netflix, Disney Plus, Prime Video. Those are all pretty nice buttons. So, uh, different layout. I see that the home is to the bottom right and the settings are up at the top right there. So, it's a little bit different. But I think it'll be something I'll be happy to get used to now that it's not quite as long as the older Sony remote was. It might also not drain the batteries as fast. So, I'm excited to use this remote let's fire the TV up. But first I'd like to thank Cometeer for sponsoring today's video. Cometeer is a completely new format of coffee. It's brewed coffee flash frozen at peak flavor delivered straight to your doorstep each month. They offer customized boxes to your roast preference including light, medium, dark, or decaf with new roasts every month. It's a super convenient way to enjoy your delicious coffee at home in under a minute saving you time each morning. As someone who regularly drinks coffee, I love how easy it is to make a cup with Cometeer. You just grab a capsule from the freezer and run it under hot water. Then drop the frozen puck into your glass or mug of choice and add six to eight ounces of hot water to melt. Add cream and sugar to your liking, of course, and enjoy. With Cometeer, melting is the new making. And for a very limited time, Cometeer is offering a huge discount of 50% off your first purchase. Plus free shipping when you order through my link today. So make sure to click that link in the description below because you definitely don't want to miss out on this one. Okay, so the setup was a little time consuming, specifically getting all the apps downloaded, but if you are familiar with the Android, or now it's called the Google TV OS, it's pretty straightforward and pretty user friendly, especially if you are a Google user or an Android user. It has minimal differences from the actual Android TV that was from a couple years ago, but as I said, I added the apps that I use, and so it added all these up to the homepage, and then what it does here is it gives you some of the things that you have watched, so you can just pop back into those. So continue watching all the different apps that you've been using and you know I use YouTube TV So a lot of that has to do with that and then you keep going down You know on now more things that have to do with YouTube TV And then of course you get a bunch of movies they recommend and it just kind of goes on forever So Android OS is relatively fast compared to some of the other operating systems you can get home navigate around. Uh, it does have some screen savers. You can pop on a screen saver, move it left or right, you know, decide how long you want to have each screen saver on. You can also add the time in the bottom corner, and I believe the date too, so those are all nice. But overall, I'm pretty satisfied with how the Google TV works, especially because some of the other operating systems are pretty slow and they can actually take away from your viewing experience. So overall, pretty straightforward and I like this. So let's get into some SDR content or standard dynamic range by watching a little YouTube TV and seeing how that sort of content looks on this X90K. So getting into the SDR content, I did want to let you know that I have it in standard pictured mode. I can also change it to cinema. 
the brightness is max, and I made sure that all the power saving features are turned off, including this light sensor so that it's at max brightness here and we can see what this TV can do. Now when watching movies or if you want the most accurate mode, you could turn it into cinema mode, but I just wanted to leave it into standard mode for watching sports and cable and things like this just to see how it looks. And when watching it in this room, I just have to say that the TV and SDR is very bright, much brighter than most OLED TVs and most QLEDs to be honest. So if you're watching sports, news, or movies on a standard cable box, this would be a great TV to have, especially if it was in a medium or darker room. If you're in a bright room, it may not be so great, but I'll talk more about that in a second. I do notice that there is a little bit of blooming around the edges, or at least a little lack of contrast. It might be a little bit of a uniformity issue. We'll do some testing and check that out. But I also feel like the contrast looks great, very inky blacks, very bright highlights. But overall, in a full screen SDR format, the content looks really good. When watching upscale content on YouTube TV that sometimes looks like it doesn't have the best bandwidth, I feel like Sony TVs typically do very well compared to many other TVs. You can mess around with some of the settings like sharpness, uh, the reality creation, which is kind of the AI, uh, you know, random noise reduction, digital noise reduction, smooth gradation. Uh, all these can be uh, tinkered with for your likings, but more or less these Sony TVs with the XR processor do a great job of upscaling. They have good color, and I think this bright LED from Sony, the X90K, does a great job with SDR content. But let's check out some HDR content because that's probably why you're paying a premium to get this nice Sony LED TV, so let's see what it looks like. When navigating around the menu, I've noticed that the remote is not great with regards to connecting to the TV. Now, I have it connected via IR, and let me go in and check and see if it's connected via Bluetooth as well, because if not, I really want to get that connected. So let's go down to the system and remote control, and it says Bluetooth, and it says remote control. Let's connect it via Bluetooth. So we're going to hold the microphone button and the volume down button for three seconds and try to get this to connect. Okay, so now a new remote has been connected. It did not prompt me to do that earlier, but now I can see that the remote is working much better when I'm not pointing it at the TV. So that's good to know because it was a little annoying that I'm behind the camera here and I'm kind of pointing it down and it wasn't connecting to the TV. So now it looks like the remote is connecting much better. So this is HDR, high dynamic range, and it's actually in Dolby Vision Bright. And I've showed some of this in Kento content on different TVs. I just think it's a good, bright, animated HDR movie. And I just think it makes it easier for people to see similar scenes from TV to TV because I talk about some of the specific scenes. But overall, in the bright scenes, this X90K is fairly bright, definitely brighter than other TVs that I've reviewed like the Samsung Frame and possibly brighter than the TCL 98 inch that I have sitting next to it. But I think it's very similar to that TV in many different ways, which I'll address right at the end here. But at this price point, I'm really enjoying how bright this TV is, how good the contrast is, very vibrant colors. When I was watching this scene on other TVs like the Samsung Frame, it was very difficult to make out both people's hair. Now, detail in the shadows can be difficult for TVs like this that are full array local dimming where you have dark areas next to bright areas and you don't have that individual pixel level control. But overall, this TV does a great job of showing detail in very dark scenes. Much better than the low-end Samsungs and LG and even some of the low-end Sonys. So that's why you buy a TV like this is because it's much brighter and it has that full array local dimming that can control areas so that you can get dark areas next to brighter areas. And it looks really good for HDR. Only thing that's a little bit concerning with this X90K is the blooming and light bleeding into the widescreen areas and sometimes on full screen. It's very difficult to show you guys on screen how the blooming looks. So I'm gonna show you some tests that kind of illustrate the issues that I'm having because it's not terrible, but I just wanna let you guys know that if you get a TV like this versus an OLED, some of the issues you might have. So I've counted the dimming zones in this X90K and it has 48 zones for a 65 inch TV, which isn't great by today's standards with regards to dimming zones, especially since the step up from this, the X95K, is a mini LED and has multiple hundred zones. So as you can see, there's noticeable blooming on this TV, and it's not just blooming, but it's that there are very large areas of the screen lit up at once. And so it doesn't always show itself in content, especially full screen SDR where 
you're watching cable and sports, you might not notice it, but when you're watching something like with those HDR movies or when there's subtitles, you'll definitely notice it on this TV more than you would on others, especially the ones that are direct light, like the Samsung frame like I was speaking about earlier, or even something like the TCL model that I have, the 98 inch. It has a couple hundred dimming zones versus this 48, but you can tell there's far less blooming on the TCL than this Sony X90K. And on top of that, the screen uniformity is also not even with regards to a black screen. So when watching a black uniformity test, you can see how the blooming can really affect your viewing when there's subtitles or when the screen goes from black to light back to black. There's a lot of light bleeding and it just becomes very distracting, especially to someone who watches a lot of different TVs. So this becomes one of the reasons that I typically choose OLED over a FALD or FALD full array local dimming TV like this because I have such a problem with these uniformity issues. And another test we check for when reviewing TVs is the dirty screen effect or DSE test that shows the overall uniformity of the panel, especially when you're showing it against a gray screen or when you have objects moving left and right like you see here. If you use your eyes to follow the hockey player going left and right, you can see some of the uniformity issues in the background. This TV is about average. It's not great, but it's also not terrible. There aren't any huge noticeable lines that I think people would have an issue with on a day-to-day -day basis, but there is some vignetting around the corners, which I did notice right off the bat, as you can see, darker around the corners and a little bit of screen uniformity issues in the middle. So it's not something that I think I would return. It's probably right in the middle, not great, but not terrible. So last thing that I wanted to test before I move on to some gaming is the reflectivity of this screen. And I will tell you that it's not great for a TV at this cost. So if you have a room that is bright or has lights like this, you may not be very happy because when you get into darker scenes or even brighter scenes, this sort of light is really easy to see, much more reflection and it's much more noticeable than an OLED TV or even a better QLED TV like a Samsung QN90B or even the top Sony X95K that has a better anti-reflective coating over it. The fact that the Sony X90K is fairly bright is a great way to combat that reflection, but if it's very bright in your room, you're gonna see a lot of these lights, and so maybe that means that this TV wouldn't be for you. But when you turn the lights back off, pretty solid TV. So let's move on to some gaming before I give you my final thoughts. Okay, when it comes to gaming, Sony has been a little hit or miss over the years um, with regards to their VRR support. I think that gaming on this sort of LED TV looks fantastic. There's a lot of detail in the shadows, good deal of brightness, but when it comes to having all the features, Sony hasn't been on top of their game. The X90K is the third version of this series TV that has two HDMI 2.1s capable of gaming at 4K at 120 Hz. This does have VRR and it does have Dolby Vision, but typically you can't use all of those features at once. And before the most recent update, you weren't able to get VRR active along with the local dimming. So you'd have kind of a poor performance with regards to HDR gaming. But now with that firmware update, you are able to get VRR and control the local dimming, though you can't control all the features, but it does make for a more enjoyable gaming experience. And while we're on gaming, I wanted to talk about the speakers real quick because I didn't do that earlier. Now the speakers are pretty average. They sound fine. Nothing to write home to mom about. And obviously you could get better sound if you had a pretty basic sound bar. I wouldn't use these speakers as the center channel for one of the higher end Sony soundbar systems. So if you are thinking about using an HTA9 or an A7000 or A5000, I would not get this TV expecting that the TV can act as a solid center channel. In fact, I'm getting my own center channel to try to work with my HDA9 system to see how that sounds. And I'll have a video on that down the road. But more or less, the speakers are average for an LED, not as good as the Sony OLED, and that's to be expected. So let's wrap this video up. So my final first impressions of this X90K from Sony, knowing that I'll probably be making another video down the road, comparing it to the A90J OLED and other TVs, is that the X90K is a great TV in most circumstances, and most people would really enjoy this TV. It's just that reviewers get a little bit more picky and you start to find some flaws and find TVs that you might think would be a little bit better for the money. 
SDR or cable news sports kind of content looks very bright and vibrant. And I think anyone using the X90K for that sort of content would be quite happy. If you move into HDR content, watching movies, especially widescreen, there might be a little bit of blooming, especially around subtitles and widescreen bars. And overall, most people really enjoy gaming on Sony TVs, though they have had some issues and kind of lag behind other companies with regards to their gaming features. The reflectivity and angles on this TV make it a little bit hard to recommend for people that have brighter rooms or maybe watching it from multiple angles or even just have a lot of ceiling lights or things in the background that might be visible because the reflectivity is just not great. But even in the summer of 2022, when I'm looking at the pricing, it's not too bad. It's already on discount a few hundred dollars off its retail price. And I'm assuming that that's going to get better as the year goes on. So if you're targeting the 75 or 85 inch version of this X90K toward Black Friday, I'm sure you're going to find that the price will be very competitive at that time. And I would probably recommend it because most people have really enjoyed these Sony mid-range TVs. And I would even say this is a little higher than the mid-range. And you'll probably find it hard to get a better TV for this, especially in the larger sizes that has this bright of a screen with superior processing and fairly good uniformity. But let me know what you guys think. Is the X90K something that you'd be targeting? Let me know in the comments. And again, with Jen's question, you've seen a lot of TV so far in 2022. What is your favorite? Let me know in the comments. And speaking of Jen, I want to give her a big shout out for helping me unbox this. Thank you very much. Make sure to subscribe, hit the notification bell, definitely like the video and I will see you on the next one.